Hello and welcome back to Dice Breaker. I'm Matt Jarvis. I'm joined very excitingly by Ryan Miller, co-designer of Disney Lorcana. Hello. Thanks for being here, Ryan. Oh, well, thanks for having we're, me. This is awesome. Yeah, we're here at Gen Con 2023 where Lorcana has pre-released. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's the first time people can buy a product. Yeah. Uh, it's been and very exciting. <laughs> let me tell you, as someone at Gen Con 2023, they really want to buy that product. There are <laughs> queues everywhere. Uh, people are, yeah, just yeah. loving Lorcana. A lot of excited folks and it's been great. I mean, we've been working on this thing for so long. So to finally get it out to people, like that has just been, that has been wonderful. Yeah, I bet. And me, I mean, let's, I guess, jump, let's jump in right from the okay. top. Yeah, yeah. For folks who might not know what Lakana is, they sure. presumably know, might know what Disney is. I uh, hope so. <laughs> if, if they don't know what Lakana is, do you mind giving us a quick yeah, one down? Yeah, so and... Disney Lakana is an all new Disney trading card game. Uh, you take on the role of an Illumineer who has the ability to use magic ink to summon glimmers of Disney characters off the page. You then go on a quest with your glimmers. The first player to complete their quest wins. Uh, if you don't know what a trading card game is, it's like a strategy card game, but you get to build your own deck mm -hmm. based on your own collection or what kind of characters you want, things like that. It's kind of like playing chess, but you get to decide the pieces you start with. Yeah. Yeah. So, and also in basic terms, if people know like Magic, Pokemon, it's like that, but it's not quite like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you know, like you still collect cards, you buy packs of cards, you don't know what you're going to find in them, uh, but building your own deck and like finding your own strategy is a big part of it. Awesome. Yeah. So when did, I guess, when did this whole project start? Because, you know, it's it got yeah. Disney on board, it's it's the House of Mouse, there's a lot <laughs> going on there. I imagine yeah. it's not an easy process to just go to Disney and say, hey, we'd love to make a card game, because sure. I suspect quite a few people would love to make a Disney card <laughs> right. game. Right. Well, you know, and Ravensburger has been, you know, collaborating and working with Disney for something like 60 years, long time, on lots of games, you know, like our villainous games, things like that. And so this is actually about four plus years ago now, um, they were kind of meeting down there in California with Disney and having kind of what they call a summit where lots of uh, folks meet up to talk about products and what's going on. And Robinsberger, the folks down there, now this is before I came along, but Robinsberger, uh, the folks were thinking like, what, what spaces are, are we not in right now that we're interested in, right? And that I think is where the idea for like, what about a trading card game? Mm -hmm. And it would actually happen in this place called The Famous. It was a bar called The Famous Bar. And so we codenamed the game Famous. It was Project Famous for like a very long time until we came to the name Lorcana. But that's yeah, it's why. A, it's a fitting name. Like, yeah. If you're going to codename a Disney game, Famous will do it. Right? right? It's yeah. not bad. It's not <laughs> bad. Uh, and then after that, it just really, you know, uh, the work really began on the world itself because we really wanted to make sure that the story and the world of the game kind of made sense as to why there's all these different characters from different franchises and why some of them even look a little different than you're, you know, than, than you're used to. Uh, so uh, we re they really started working on that, and then I got brought in a little later, maybe a year, about a, almost a year into this whole process. I had been working as a freelance board game designer uh, for a while now, and I was working with them on a Princess Bride <laughs> board game. And Princess Bride, one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, I really enjoyed. It. I came up with this kind of book system where you like open it like this, and there's a board, and you play that chapter, and then when you're done, you go to the next one, and that sort of thing. It was, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun, and. And I was working with my friend Steve Warner, who I've known forever, uh, but he was working there as kind of my producer. And uh, we worked together and made what I think is a really, really fun game. But doing that, I got to really know Robinsberger from the inside and how they work and what their, their ethos is. And when I first got a copy of Princess Bride, and it was just beautiful, like there was so much love and attention to detail, right? And so when Steve told me, towards the end of that process, told me about Project Famous, you know, Disney's Arcana, I really started thinking like, okay, well, you know, making a trading card game is a big deal. It's, it's a lot. It's more complicated on just about every level, uh, you know, from production to art to game design to everything. Um, but when I saw what they had done for Princess Bride and I saw what they have done with uh, uh, Villainous, uh, I came to the realization that not only can they do this, but they might be the only company that can do this right, you know? And that was really what we wanted. We didn't do this right. We didn't have a time frame. You know, we, when I finally took the job and I started as a game designer working alongside Steve and he and I, you know, we've worked together for so long. He, we came up in Wizards together. Um, both of us kind of came up through retail and then up to corporate and eventually worked in R&D. He is a brilliant designer and he's one of the best developers that I've ever met. Like he can find the problem with your game. I used to call him the dream killer because I would come <laughs> to him with like a, a fun idea for a game. And be like, oh, here's this new idea, you know, and he would play it and he would just break it. He'd be like, well, here's the problem. It's this, this, and this. I'm like, thank you, Steve. <laughs> thank you. And I'd walk away. But obviously you want someone like Steve doing yeah, that before right. the players do it, right? right so yeah. he's just brilliant and super fun. And, and he was in my wedding, actually. He's a, he's a dear friend of mine. So anyway, 
I get to work with him and we start this process. And Robin's Burger is great. They're like, take as much time as you need. We want to get this right. As right as we can, right? I mean, we're never gonna, no one's ever gonna have a perfect launch, that sort of thing. But, and we, we started with uh, a couple of parameters. We knew, for example, that uh, a lot of folks who've never played trading card games are probably gonna get into this. So we want something very welcoming. But we also knew existing trading card gamers were going to give this one a shot as well. And we wanted them to find some of that really great strategy and, and skill testing moments. Uh, and then it was just a long process of trying games. And it was that dream, baker, dream uh, killer process, but like for both of us. So he got to feel it too. Sometimes we'd come up with a game and we'd both get really excited about it. And then something would just be like, you know what? We don't love this. And it was like the first crack in an egg. And then we'd bash it down and we'd start all over again. But about six months later, we finally came up with what ended up being Disney Arcana from a game design standpoint. Awesome. And like you say there, you've obviously got a, a lot of experience working in trading card games. Like you, like you say, you've worked at Wizards, you've worked on the Warhammer trading card game, you've worked on things like the Naruto game, the anime game. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, coming to a trading card game in the year, well, 2023, but however many years ago yeah, it right, was when right. you started, <laughs> you know, it's you know, 30 years since Magic, Pokemon's been around for ages, you go, like those three seem to have such a hold on sure, what people yeah, expect yeah. from a trading card game. Many have tried, many have failed, some have kind of ended up in that middle ground. Like, it, it feels like a lot of pressure to try and inject something new that doesn't just feel like it's going to be way too much for people to understand. Or... Sure, sure. And, and no, that's important, I think. That's important. I mean, definitely, there's, there's a lot of trading card gamers out there. And I want to, you know, I'm hoping that Lorcana will be a place that, that many of them will find a home in, right? But really, we also want a lot of new people coming into this. Uh, to this. I, I would love it if, you know, a, a Disney fan who's never been to a, a hobby store would walk into one of these wonderful stores, see all of these games and go, where has this been all my life, right? I believe we're gonna do that, right? Some number of the Disney fans are gonna be like, oh my God. Because, I mean, core hobby stores are amazing, right? You've got places to sit and play, you've got all these wonderful games, all these things, and I really believe we're gonna bring a lot of new people into this. And so, uh, yeah, so I wanted to make sure that the game itself uh, was welcoming. And so we we came up with a game that I feel, and, and, and trading card games actually do this fairly well, right? Because what you need, I think, for a good, game design or for good trading card game design is that the the bones of the design are strong but they they're not complex mm -hmm. it's because it's the cards that are going to add everything else right and so that means that the basic game design can be fairly accessible fairly uh welcoming uh but the the strategy and the skill really comes in which cards you play how you play them and some of the strategic decisions that go along in the game and so we've got kind of so it's, it's, it's already kind of amenable to that, that style that we wanted, that, that small target we were trying to hit. Right? And like speaking of obviously other trading card games, it feels like particularly things like Pokemon and Magic have gone through this incredible boom during the pandemic. You know, we've seen folks like Logan Paul picking up cards oh, as the sure. collecting aspect, <laughs> but also Magic is bringing in, you know, other licenses, Lord of the Rings, oh, sure. Warhammer. Yeah. Did that influence how you were approaching this game? Because again, they were, they were bringing in licenses that people were familiar with, much like Disney and kind of just pushing out into what feels like a much more mainstream audience than had typically been there before. You know, I, I don't think we're that concerned with, like, I'm not that concerned with competing with those games. Like, I just want to make an awesome game experience, right? And I want to share, like, and, and with Disney themes and characters. And, I, and so that really was our goal. I mean, we know those games are out there. I've worked on many of these games. And, <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, uh, but for Lorcana, it was really just about, let's make something, you know, it's kind of what I said about Princess Bride. Like, the people who made this love it. The people who made this, there's the attention to detail and love in everything, and I really believe that. It might sound a little cheesy, but I really believe that when people pick up the game, they're gonna feel that, right? They feel like the people who made this love this, right? The people who made this work very hard on this. And and so really, to me, it's, it wasn't about those other games, right? It was, uh, and those other games, they're great. I love Magic, I played, I played Magic since it came out, right? <laughs> uh, but this is for a new kind of audience, uh, in addition to the trading card gamers, right? Mm. So it's just, it's, it's been very exciting. It's easily the most exciting game I've ever worked on. Nice. And you've mentioned the, uh, it's, it's Disney, but it's obviously set in kind of a, a setting of its yeah, own. The, yeah. Like your Illumineers, there's the whole aspect of ink, and there are Disney characters as we kind of know them, but there are also Disney characters as we've not seen them before. There's like Stitch as a rock star. Yeah, yeah, there's Stitch like rock a star. lot of like playing around <laughs> with what people expect from those characters. We have giant Tinkerbell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so how did how did all that come into the game? I guess you know, was it fairly easy to work with Disney and say, hey, we want to do this kind of out there idea with this character? You know, you're working with characters that have been around for decades, like sure, almost a yeah. century in some some respects. You know? I think there's a couple of components to what you're asking. And I, you know, uh, 
like both uh, for us, it was important that the story made sense of it, that there was a story that held it together, right? So one of the things, one of the messages we want to send is that we're serious about this game and we're, we're here for the long haul, right? We're not just putting characters on cards, right? And so we wanted to make a world that made sense of all that, right? And so one of the things we came up with, this is like the, the elevator pitch, but one of the things we came up with is this idea of the great illuminary. And it's this floating like library that contains every story ever told. Because if it doesn't do that, the people of Earth forget the stories, right? And it's all these Illumineers kind of work in there, they're archiving and they're kind of gathering the stories from our, our planet. Uh, but, but one day it's mysteriously empty. It, it's, it's abandoned and no one knows why. And the, and the, Illumineer, uh, the great Illuminary itself uh, starts to call to creative people of our world and basically offering them a portal. Do you want to come into Lorcana? Uh, and so someone might come and see this, this symbol on the, on the ground and if they choose to go in, they find themselves in the Great Illuminary. We're kind of sitting in front of one of the pictures of it right now. Uh, and that's when they begin to learn the magic of Lorcana. Uh, and, and that ability I spoke of earlier, of being able to summon glimmers of Disney characters. And a glimmer is more like a, a sentient snapshot of the character. So it's not the actual character, it's not actually Moana, it's a glimmer of Moana. And that's why, for example, you can have a couple of Moanas out when you're playing because they're glimmers, right? And that's also why some of them, we call them dreamborn glimmers, they have some of the imagination of the Illumineer kind of woven in, and that's why they look a little different, you know? One of my favorites is, uh, we've got Tamatoa, so Mo Mo Moana's my favorite princess movie from a musical standpoint. Uh, my favorite princess movie is Princess and the Frog. Um, anyway, uh, but Tamatoa is amazing, uh, you know, uh, and in his song, he mentions how he was a drab little crab once, and so, of course, we had to make a card that's Tamatoa Drab Little Crab. And he's just this tiny little crab, and he's got this little piece of gold, and he's so <laughs> good. Uh, but this is fun. The, the Dreamborn just gives us opportunity to do that. And so, um, with Disney, they, uh, you know, they kind of have worked with us to make sure that we're true to the story, and we're tr but we're also true to the characters. Like, we're never going to change the core of a character. We're never going to make a villain into a hero or a hero into a villain. Something that, you know, they, we both feel is very important about that. But I think the other component that is um, we want the fans to understand that we love these characters too. And they need to kind of trust us to go on a journey. Something I actually learned as a, a club DJ. I used to be a club DJ in Seattle. And when you're uh, playing music for a crowd early in the night, you have to gain their trust. And the way you do that is by playing songs they know. Because you're really telling them like, hey, I know you. And I, I, you, and I know you're going to like this song. And they can sing along, they know the words and all that stuff. But then later in the night, now that they trusted you, you can now take them on a journey, play some songs they don't know, but you know they'll like because it's you know of your own knowledge. And it's similarly with Disney characters. We, we love them too, and we want to have that conversation with Disney fans and let them know that, that hey, if you want your regular Moana, you want that, that's great. There's some other cool stuff too, if you like as well, kind of thing, so. I've got to ask, how, how weird are you going to get with this? Because <laughs> so there's, like, there's the Disney mobile game, for those who don't know, uh, Mirrorverse, I think it's called. Oh, and I've heard of it, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's the internet's favorite, Hot Woody. And, <laughs> what? And I know I've never heard of this. Technically Pixar, like I understand that Pixar's not currently in the game, it's just like super buff Woody. And that's why I'm wondering, like, were there ideas like that, that you went to Disney and were like, hey, you know, we want to get weird. We want to make like buff, I don't know, buff Pinocchio or... I don't think we're going to get weird. I think we're going to get wonderful. You know, okay. like, I think it's really, you know, it, 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 every character we do is like a love letter to that character. Just you know? go on the internet and search Hot Woody. I don't want to yeah. do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, on my work Wi-Fi, right? It'll be great. Obviously, you know, whimsy and fun is a huge part of, of Disney and it's a part of Lorcana. But reverence, I think, is also a, a, another one too. So, you know, I think I think those are the, the guiding hands. But I think we're we're doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like we're doing some pretty neat stuff that the fans, I think, are going to be very excited about. Yeah, and in terms of <laughs> staying faithful to those characters, like you say, you know, you're you're putting Disney characters in the game, but you're also designing a game that feels balanced, that feels fair, that feels yeah, strategic. Yeah. And like, how did you find that level of okay, well, you know, this character needs to feel a certain way because yeah, that's the way they yeah. are in that movie. But in terms of the gameplay sense, like maybe we can't do this, we have to tweak it one way or the other. Yeah, so there's this kind of concept I learned, uh, there's a concept I learned at Wizards, it's called like top-down design. Mm -hmm. And that means you start with the theme and, and you design to the theme. And then there's bottom-up design, which is more like you start with a mechanic that you need, you know. And, and, and a good trading card game kind of requires both, right? Because as you kind of mentioned, some cards you just need in the game. You need a game that draws you two cards, right? Like play this, draw two cards. You need those types of cards, right? So what we do, though, we tend to do, rely more heavily on the top-down version of that, right? Because we want the characters to feel in the game like their like their uh, their character. So what we'll do is we actually start with a uh, big spreadsheet, really really awesome spreadsheet, 
uh, that just names the characters right off the bat, and we design to the characters. So before we design, not not all of the cards, but like uh, as many as possible, and then we design the cards to the character, uh, and that's kind of our first draft. And then we start to go back and say, okay, what do we need? What are we missing? What types of uh, abilities do we need here and there? And so, but with every chance we get, we try to. Like one of my favorite examples of this is Gramatala. So I'll go back to Moana for Gramatala. Um, and if you haven't seen it yet, spoiler alert, Grandma Tala passes away during the, the movie, right? Uh, but then she comes back and helps, right? She, and she says, I'll always be with you, right? And in the game, if she is banished from play, she actually becomes a resource for you. And so instead of going to the discard pile like a normal character, she becomes a resource. And it, it, I love those kind of moments in gameplay because not, it's not just a story you're reading or seeing in the art, but it's actually mechanically into the game. You're like, oh, it's like her character. She's, she'll always be with me. She's right here, you know? So those kind of moments are super fun to create. Nice. Were there any cards that went the other way and that they just took, I guess, longer than the average card to, to make them oh, feel right? Oh, 100%. Those are always, I mean, those always happen. I think that, um, especially in the early phase of card design, you want to get, as you might say, a little weird. You want to get a little, like, you know, you've got to try some stuff. And, you know, when I used to run design teams at Wizards, I would always say to my designers that if you're not scaring the developers with your designs, you're not, you know, you're probably not doing your job. You want to, you want to, you, you kind of want to do that. And so we'll, you know, so I encourage that, right? When, we, when we're when we designing cards, let's, let's get a little wild. Let's get a, maybe some, we think it might be too powerful, I don't know, but let's put it in the file. And then when it goes to development, that's when those kind of rough edges get get honed out and that sort of thing. So it's a it's it's more art than science, I think, right? But there is some science. So, <laughs> and we're obviously at the we're at the start of like Lorcana at the moment, like with uh, Gen Con. Yeah. Like yeah. we are, we're quite literally at the start. Of yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're already looking ahead. In November, there's the second set coming out, mm -hmm. and beyond that, you know, Ravensburger has announced plans to put out like regular sets on a regular every basis. Quarter, every yeah. quarter. Every yeah. How are you looking forward from here? You know, we've got. The likes of Magic, which is 30 years in, has loads of mechanics, oh, loads yeah, of keywords. Yeah. You know, how do you look ahead to the next five years, 10 years, and find where you want to be at those points in terms of the game sure. and its audience and bringing people in, but also taking them a little bit further each time? Yeah, I can think, I think, I mean, you're asking kind of a philosophical question, so right. I think <laughs> I can answer that without saying what we're going to be doing, right? Uh, but really, it's a matter of, of um, we've got different teams, so I'm, I'm the brand manager, so I am more of the, you know, looking at the wider picture and then the other teams kind of tend to zoom in a bit either on one or two sets or that sort of thing and so but I work with all those teams uh, to tell this longer story right uh, and both in gameplay and in story right uh, so really it's about um, kind of using our experience uh, like Steve and I and some of the other folks on the team that have worked on trading card games you there's kind of a life cycle of a new trading card game where you know for example the first two sets are often really just kind of ramping things up right I, I sometimes internally would refer to set two as more like 1.5, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's really just about kind of getting players the cards that they need to, to make sure that there's a healthy number of decks out there that are viable, right? And then after that is when you can start really uh, changing things up and doing some, some cool things. But you always have to keep your audience in mind, right? You never want to outpace them when it comes to complexity. Uh, you don't want to put too much in there. And also you want to save some stuff because we're looking in the long haul. We're looking 10, 20 years down the line, right? We want to make sure that we have lots of lots of surprises, and so we don't want to, you know, put too many in one set, that sort of thing. So really, it's a matter of coming up with some really cool ideas, and then kind of portioning those ideas out down the road, based on both the life cycle of the game and how young it is, and also uh, when we think those types of ideas would be a good fit for the life of the product. Excellent. And in terms of that life cycle, like again, we've seen Pokemon Magic become not just games but collectibles in their own right. You know, you've got yeah, cards going yeah. for just staggering amounts of money. <laughs> and in a lot of cases, you know, people are just sealing them up, they're just making them collectibles rather than things to be put in a deck and built with. Do you have, like, how do you approach wanting to keep this as a game and not just wanting people to go like, well, this is a great, you know, Mickey card, it's worth X amount, I'm just gonna seal it up and that's I mean, that. I, I, my first answer is I, I don't, I'm, if they wanna collect, that's great. I'm told it's a fun game to collect. If if you just want to collect these Disney cards, I, that's amazing. It's and we want to make sure that that remains a fun experience, right? I want to, you know, most trading card uh, the most trading card game experiences, the collecting is an aspect, regardless of kind of where you are. Some people are more on the collector side, some people more on the player side. Most people are somewhere in between. Um, I think it's great a way to, to to involve yourself with the product. It's fun, right? I want to make sure that that's always fun is collecting. But I my secret wish, I guess it's not a secret now. But anyway, my secret wish is that a lot of these collectors. Say, hey, what 
you know, what is the game? It sounds really interesting, right? And they try it out. And I think we'll get a nice uh, section of the collectors who will be like, you know, I've never done a trading card game before, but I'm going to give this one a try. And the reason I like that, or the reason I hope for that, is that um, it's really fun. It's a really fun style of gameplay, and I think more people should try it. But also just adds more value to your collection, right? It's more than just looking and, 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 uh, and just. is kind of a bad way to put it, but it's more than, you know, the collecting and the organizing and all that stuff. It's also, you get to play this really fun game, too, so it adds this extra layer of value that's really fun, and so I hope so, but if people want to collect it, I think it's, that's great. And in terms of cards, you know, do you have a favorite from the first chapter of the first set? <laughs> like we were just uh, talking about this. Uh, I know that there's so... going to be a diplomatic answer if they're all great, you know, fantastic. But you must have a favorite. Of course. I mean, yeah. but, but my favorites tend to be less about gameplay and more about story. So, so like, Grandma Tala is one that I already told you about. There is Ariel on Human Legs, which is also really fun because she can't be used to sing songs because she <laughs> has given up her voice, right. right? So in the game, there are song cards that characters can play, and she can't do that because she has no voice. Like, things like that that I think are really fun. Um, gosh, there's a uh, Hades, um, there's a couple of Hades that I, that I, oh, no, I'll tell you my favorite, actually, from a gameplay standpoint, is um, uh, Stitch Carefree Surfer, because uh, he's got a really strong ability. You play him, if you've got at least two other characters, you draw two cards, very good. So, and I need some, too, so if you have, I need them for my deck, so if you could, that'd be great. I feel like <laughs> if the co-designer of Disney Lucano can't find the cards that he needs. Well, but. yeah, well, I mean, that, I mean, we're putting all the product out. Like, I, I, I got some product, but we're putting it all out in the world, because really my, my hope is that, that, that the community gets this, right? right. And they, they get to open the packs and, and, and have fun with it, and so we don't, I don't have a lot of product yeah. right now, but and that's okay, I'm okay with that, right? All you hope for is to just build a Chad Stitch deck. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Just that eventually, uh, we'll have released enough stitches. I can just make an entire deck of stitches. It'll be my stitch deck. So, yeah. But yeah, but thank you so much. Like, in oh, no, terms thanks for of having me. Looking ahead for Locana, looking ahead for yourself, like, what would you like, you know, where should folks go to, like, find out more, like, to get oh, into sure. this game off the bat if they're, this is kind of where their appetite Oh, yeah. Disney, so, DisneyLocana.com is really the, you know, the, the hub. We also have a great app that has, like, news. It has a card library in it, so you can see every single card. You can add it to wish lists and make decks and stuff like that. Uh, so that's really the place. I would start with the app or, or the uh, website there. Uh, but we've got big plans. There's, there's a lot more coming that I wish I could talk about. But it's just, you know, we've got big plans for organized play, for example. Um, we've just got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And so I'm just really excited to share it with the world. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing it. But yeah, thank you so much. Ryan right. Miller. Thanks for having me. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we're Dicebreaker. If you want more Lorcana coverage and content, it will be here, right here on youtube.com slash dicebreaker or over on our website, dicebreaker.com, where we also have a how to play guide on Lorcana if you want to get stuck in. But for now, I've been Matt Jarvis. Thank you again to Ryan Miller. Thanks. And until we meet again, have a lovely day. Let's Goodbye. Open, let's open some packs. Oh, yeah.